bless the Lord, bless the Lord, let us bless the Lord today. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful message today. Wash and be clean, wash and be clean, wash and be cleansed, wash and be made whole. Oh, yes, Second Kings 5, 8 through 14. Bless the Lord. Welcome, be holy, be perfect community. I pray that you are striving in holiness and that you are striving in perfection in the word of God and in the lifestyle and conduct of the Most High. Welcome and may you be blessed. May your spirit be strengthened because a strong spirit sustains a man. So may you be strengthened. May you be strengthened. May you be strengthened and may peace overflow you in the blessed name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord. Bless the Lord. Wash and be made clean. Now we know this story, but do we truly know the story? Uh, now, just a little recap here. Uh, we know that during the time of Elisha, Elisha had several kings uh, when he was a prophet in Israel. But the one we're going to talk about today, the one we're going to talk about today is Jehoram. Jehoram. And we know Jehoram was a very bad boy. Yes, he was a very bad boy. Why was he a bad boy? Because Jehor, Jehoram uh, set up idols uh, in high places and commanded the people to fall down and worship them. He was a really bad boy. So let's get on subject here. But I, you need that background to understand what is going on. Now, wash and be clean. Second Kings 5 and 8. Now, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent word to the king, asked him, why have you torn your clothes? <laughs> Just let Naaman come to me, and he, and he will do what? And he shall know that there is a true prophet in Israel. Uh, what? Uh, who? A uh, true prophet in Israel. Why? I mean, I. you got to ask. You got to ask. Why did the king tear his clothes? Why did he rip off his clothes? Why? What was up with this guy? Why are you ripping off your clothes? He knew he, he was a rebellious king. And he knew that the king of Amron, uh, now they Syria, was going to chop off his head if his servant, his commander, Naaman, was not here. Now this king, Jehoram, he was like distraught. He was like, oh my God, I'm a wicked man. I can't hear nobody. And guess what? The people, these old guys is practicing witchcraft and voodoo and all this kind of stuff. They ain't going to heal nobody either. Oh, God. You know, so his life was on the line. Even though the king of Assyria had sent him money and all that, his life was still on the line. So he was like, oh, my God. And so when the prophet heard about it, he said, Lord, I'm sure he was just laughing. Oh, yeah, this guy, he's king, but he can't do nothing. Oh, so send him to the man of God. Isn't that something? You know, you got to know who to go to. When you need something from God, don't go to a wicked fellow. Even though he may have some authority, position, or whatever, he cannot help you. He's just going to run in his closet and tear his clothes. Why? Because he know he have no power or no insight with God. Now, let's move on. I think that is like... <laughs> And God got, look at what God show us. Don't be going to people that ain't got no power in God. You know, just, but go to the man of God and get your help. Go to the woman of God and get your help. So the king sent Naaman. He sent Naaman to Elisha. Now, here, look at this king. Look, look at this commander here. And 2 Kings 5, 9 through 10, here's what he say. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots, and stopped at the entrance of Elisha's house. 
Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored to you and you will be clean. Look, Elisha didn't even come out of his house. <laughs> he didn't come out of his house. This guy rode up on some chariots. Hey, he rich, he got money, he got everything, but he don't have control over the man of God. He don't have control over God. So he's respectful. He's respectful. He have leprosy. So if you're a leopard, you're not just supposed to be spreading around your leprosy because it was contagious. But guess what? He had all his lynchmen, I call them lynchmen, all his subjects running behind him and his horses and his chariot. And guess what? Half of them were probably leopard. Leopard too, because they were messing with the guy that had leopards. So guess what? When you hang out with a leopard, you bound to get leprosy. That's just simple. Now, Naaman, he rode up in his chariot. He had all that goes. You know, he had all those gifts and everything that he wanted to buy his healing. <laughs> yes, he wanted to buy his healing. The man was suffering, so he wanted a way out. You know, and we get like that sometimes. We want to wait out. We want to wait out. So we go to all these meetings with people that say that they are prophets and everything. And we just throw the money we should be paying our bills with. <laughs> yes, pay your bills <laughs> that, uh, that we should be paying our bills with. And they give us a phony word because what? They were not true prophets. And then a week later, a year later, you still have the same problem. Why? Because you did not go to a true prophet of God. And that's the problem with the saints that ain't that want to be saints. <laughs> okay. Now, so Naaman, so Naaman, he, this guy, he's, look, he is really riled because he's like, are you kidding me? This little guy, he didn't even come out the house to meet me. I understand because he's probably afraid, afraid that he may catch leprosy. But he's going to tell me to go wash in the, what, in the Jordan seven times? Am I a fool or something? That he's going to tell me to go out there and clown in the Jordan while I got all my men and everybody, you know, my entourage following me. I'm going to make a fool out of myself and wash your flesh and it will be restored to you and you you will be clean. Now, this is the word of the Lord from the man of God. So why would he get mad? You see, we, we are like that. We are like that. We need help. <laughs> we need help. And then we go to a woman, a man of God, and they give the word of the Lord, if they true prophets, if they give the word of the Lord for you to do something and because it just don't click with you, you just pay. Hey, you fail to do it. Or you do it your way. And then and then things don't go well and you're like, well, you know, that, that word just wasn't for me. Yeah, it was for you. But you wanted to do it your way. And that's why you got the same problem. So, but God, he'll have, he'll still have mercy. In 2 Kings 5, 11, verses 11 and 12, he said, but Naaman was feared. This guy was irate. He was so mad. He was shaken. He was irate. And he went away and he said, indeed, I thought he would at least come out to see me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place of leprosy and heal the leper. But the guy didn't even come out. What is wrong? I'm just, oh, my rate. I could just send somebody in there and cut his head off. <laughs> Look at this guy. So he won it done his way. He don't want to do what God say. He really don't. 
Because he is saying, indeed, I thought he would at least. So he's talking about what he thought. So it's not about what we think when we want something from God. It's what God thinks. You know, he say, I thought he would at least come out and see me and stand and call on the name of his God and wave his hand over the place of the leprosy and I'll be healed. See, he's saying, he's telling the prophet, how he's thinking in his mind, this is how the prophet should do it. This is how the God, the Lord God of Israel should heal him. But he get a big disappointment because God works the way he want to. And if a person is truly sent from God, they going to do what the Lord say, how he say it, when he say it. And that's all. See, Elijah didn't go into this. You're going to be this and you're going to be that. No, he just say simply go wash in the Jordan seven times and you'll be clean. That's it. He didn't have a whole bunch of, oh God, this I'm calling down. He didn't know. He just say, go. You see, that's how simple it is. He what? He sent his word. See, a lot of times we think we need a big theatrical performance to get healed, and we don't. In verse 12, he said, Are not Abana and Fafur the rivers of Damascus in Aram? That means Syria now they, but that better than all the waters of Israel? Gonna send me to these what they call infidels, Israelites in their area, and you want me to be healed? And the Jordan is dirty, muddy, whatever. If you ever been to Jordan, you know that it's brown water. It is not blue green. Okay, it is not blue green. So he is sitting there. He was so furious. He, this guy was furious, and so look. So he turned away and went away in rage. You see, he was angry. He, <laughs> anger don't get us here. Anger ain't going to do anything for us <laughs> to make it worse, you know. And he turned away. He turned away from the word of the Lord because it didn't agree with the way he thought it should be. And we do that all the time. And then we say, well, I just don't have faith. No, you just not obedient. That's what it is. You're just not obedient. See, we have to be obedient to the word. You know, it ain't no big mystery. Just be obedient. And in verse 13, he say, Then his servant approached and said to him, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he has said to you, Wash and be clean? Why, why are you making a big deal out of it? Do you want to be healed or not? And his servant, you know his servant. He just don't want to get his head chopped off because the guy is serious. He's already mad. He's feeling bad. He got leprosy. So he, you know, he just not in a, he just not in a state to take good advice. So his servant ease up and try to talk softly and try to encourage him. Like, hey, you know, just try it. Try it. it. Try it. Just go wash and be clean. That's all you got to do. That He didn't need to tell you to go, uh, you know, take some frankincense and myrrh, you know, and, you know, do incense and all that kind of stuff. He didn't, he didn't tell you that. He just told you the simple way. He just told you what his God said for you to do to be clean. So what is the problem, master? Look. And so with some, see, you see the servant here, the servant has wisdom. You know, the servant has wisdom. He didn't get on anybody's side. He didn't say that Elisha was wrong. He should have respected, you know, we got some naysayers that will go out there and tell a person that's walking in disobedient to the word of the Lord that, you know, they should have did it this way. You know, that I thought that, you know, the woman of God or the man of God, they should have pulled you aside. They should have, uh, you know, did this, you know, <laughs> go ahead and listen to them. If you want to, if you know, and see how far you get, you need to listen to the person that's going to encourage you to do what the Lord say, to do the acts of the Lord in his word. 
So what did Naaman do? Naaman, he had to think about that, you know, because he had to ask himself, do I want to be healed or do I want to walk in my pride? Do I want to walk in my status, in my position? You know, do I want to hold on to my prestige in front of all my uh, servants, in front of my army? Because, you know, Naaman was a commander. So let's look at what he does. After he get good counsel from one of the servants, and then he says, and verse 14, chapter 5, second king. So he went down and he plunged himself into the Jordan. Yeah, he threw himself in the Jordan. He wanted, look, when we want to be healed, we're going to do what we need to do to get our healing. When we want to be set free, truly set free, we're going to do what needs to be done to get that freedom. And he went down, he plunged himself, in other words, he emerged himself in the Jordan, in the Jordan. You know, the Jordan is not the cleanest place. And this is what he's saying. He said, hey, that's not, that's not blue-green water. That's, that, that is not like the Med, the Mediterranean Sea. This is, uh, we're talking about the Jordan, okay? And so he went ahead and he did it seven times, just as the man of God had said. And his flesh, and his flesh was restored like that of a little child, and he was clean. 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 Look, and he was clean. So he went down. What did he do? He came down from his pride, from his own thinking, from his own uh, concept of what he thought should be done. He came down. Listen to what the Lord is saying. So he went down. He came down off his high horse of arrogance. He came down off his commander's title, his commander's respect. He came down. He humbled himself before God. See, we missed that. We think that he was just going down to the river, and he did, but something else was taking place or took place before he went down to the river and did what? Dumped himself in the Jordan seven times. So look what happened. This man repented of his pride and arrogance and basically his insult on the man of God. You know, he didn't go in there and confront him. He, look, he was probably afraid because Elisha was a very popular prophet. You know, he was definitely not a guy to contend with, okay? You know, we had to understand this. And so he didn't, he didn't, you know, he could have been mad enough to go in there and do it, but he didn't. So what happened? He come down, he repent, he come down off his high horse, his chariot. You know, he had people running behind him. So, you know, he was like the man. But he was not really the man because he had to go to God's man, the man of God. See, if you go into somebody that you think is the man of God or the woman of God, you know, that's not going to get you anywhere. You know, they thought, they thought Jehoram could help them. Jehoram was like, ah, that guy went into a panic. He probably just went hid under the bed. Why? Because he knew he didn't have any uh, relationship with God to get anyone healed. So what did he do? He sent him to the man of God. You see? Even a sinner know who to go to. But some of us, some of us saints, because of our pride, because we're so, so uppity, our nose is up, and we think that because we have degrees, we have money, we have whatever, you know, you got a man or a woman of God. They walk in, they driving around. Some of them ride around on a bicycle with a basket on it. <laughs> they go get grocery and you roll up in a Mercedes and you think that you are just too far up to ask them for help. 
But guess what? That's a choice that most men and women of God make so that they won't be contaminated by material lust. But you don't get it. We don't get it. But look, once he realized, once he came down off his high horse, I like that. Once he came down off his chariot of arrogance and pride, he went down to the river Jordan. He went down to the river Jordan. He went down to the place of cross over. You know, they crossed over the Jordan to get to the promised land. So he had to cross over to get what he needed from God. See, we got to make a decision. And some of that decision, sometimes it needs to cross over. And that's what Naaman did. And he came up, what? Cleansed. His flesh was just like restored like a little child. So we can receive from God if we do it his way. If we do it his way. If we do it his way. And don't try to deviate from the way that the Lord say do something. We always want to tell God what to do. You know, stop that so that you can receive what God is trying to get to you. Father, we just thank you and we bless you. May you be blessed. Father, for everlasting, for everlasting, you are God. You are God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the who run into it and the righteous, the holy run into it and they are safe. May the Lord bless you and keep you and keep you from stumbling and falling to the all wise and true God. Jehovah our King. Amen. Amen. Amen.